Welcome back to another mind test modding tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at check commands. So to get started, we need to do mind test .register chat command and then parentheses quotes and whatever our chat command is going to be. So we'll just we'll just use test for this first basic one. Uh, and then a comma, an opening squiggly brace. And then, uh, then we're ready to put our check command in. So to execute a check command, you just do the backslash and then whatever the check command is. So in this case, we would do backslash test. And then whatever we end up writing as our check command will be executed when you do that. So uh, let's just start off by doing a description. Um, and this will show up in the help information. So we'll just do something like, hey there because, um, you know, why not? And then we need a function, which will equal, and uh, we have the player name that we can pass as a variable. So let's go ahead and do something here. If we want to get the player, we will need to get the player data, which we can get by doing local player equals my test get player by name. And then we need to pass the name, which we're getting from the function. And then we can do something with this. So uh, we'll just go ahead and this is the easiest first example. We'll just do player set position. And then we'll do a position table, which I'm going to go ahead. Actually, um, I don't know if we have to do it this way, but I'll go ahead and do it this way. And then z equals 10. I don't know if you can just do a table of 10, 10, 10, or if you have to do the x, y, and z. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and do end to close out the function. Save the file, and we will jump over into my test. So here we are in my test, and you can see that my position is, uh, what is that? 8,296, 6.5, and, and 8,854. So if we go ahead and do the test chat command, uh, we are now placed at 10, 10, 10, which uh, conveniently enough is someplace where we're not underground, which I was a little worried about. And then if we go ahead and do help, we we need to know which mod that the chat command is from, which in this case is new mod. And here it says test. And here's our description. Hey there, which of course doesn't help us a whole lot. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and change that. So rather than saying, hey there, let's do something like teleports player to 10, 10, 10. And now, of course, you know, teleporting to 10, 10, 10 is kind of, you know, useless unless there's something there. But uh, maybe you want to make a check command that people can use to teleport to spawn. Well, you would just change your position here to wherever your static spawn point is. Or maybe you want, uh, oh, I don't know, you have like some... I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, some attractions, what do you call those things? Uh, landmarks. You have you know, some impressive builds or something, or a marketplace, or whatever. You just want some place that people can teleport to easily by using a chat command. This is how you would do that. You would just set the player's position. Of course, you may also want to, um, you know, let's go ahead and just, create, let's just create another one. Um, you may want to not actually move the player at all. You may want to, oh, I don't know. You may want to send the player uh, the, a, a chat message of it. Let's just do a chat command called alpha, because why not? And uh, we'll do a description equals, um, what do I want to use for description? Not repeats, uh, prints the alpha bet to the player that's invoked the command yeah 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 i don't know why you would ever want to do this but if you did here's how you do it and then we need a function of course and we're gonna pass the name of the person that runs the chat command and uh let's see what are we gonna need to do here we already have the player name so we just do mind test dot chat send player and then uh, the name 
And then the message we want to send to the player, which will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Wow. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty great typist, huh? And then we'll just uh, close that function out. We'll go ahead and save that. And uh, let's see what happens when we hop over back into my test. So ignore all that red text. We're not worried about that. <laughs> wow, look at this. It's super helpful. It, the text is also kind of difficult to see because it's uh, on a light background. But there we go. Uh, we have the alphabet typed out for us. Because we need to know the alphabet. I'm not sure why we want to know the alphabet. But if we do, we can. It would make more sense to, um, to not be typing out the alphabet. But, you know, just as an example, that's something you can do. All right. So, so far, two really very simple examples let's uh let's spice things up a little bit and let's let's make a chat command that um not everybody can use so we'll do um i'll just use the chat command called away because uh why not i guess and the description we'll just do uh Um, I don't know, moves player away. Sure, that, that makes sense. And then um, to uh, limit this to the amount of players that can use it, we are going to tie this chat command to the home privilege. So to do that, oops, I forgot the equal sign. So to do that, we just add a table of privileges that the player needs to have. So home equals true. So now the only way you'll be able to use this chat command is if you have the home privilege. And um, I don't know what this chat command should really do. I mean, optimally it would uh, like teleport a player away from something, but I'm not really too worried about writing up code to teleport players. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this and do that. Is there a way that I can just uppercase this all? Probably not. But that works just as well. All right, so now we have a another super useful chat command, which we will take a look at. All right, so let's try out the away chat command. All right, so we got all the uppercase letters. Let's check out our privs. Um, okay, let me actually do this. So it looks like I have the home privilege, so let's go ahead and do revoke single player home. I no longer have the home privilege. Um, for some weird reason, they doesn't get commas between those, but the other one does, very interesting. Oh, well, and now we're gonna go ahead and try the away privilege again. Oops, or the away chat command, boom. You don't have permission to run this command. Missing privilege, home. So whether you tie into existing privileges or you create your own new privileges for the chat commands, that is how that is done. I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and grant myself home again. Whoops. And there we see all is working as should. Let's uh, look at a couple more examples. Okay, so we've looked at using privileges to make sure players or only certain players can do can use the chat command. So let's go ahead and do something um, something that uses more than just just one thing. Um, that that's. That's a terrible way to explain. Um, it'll become more clear as I as I get this typed up. It's hard to talk and think of how to spell and type at the same time sometimes, you know? You know what I mean? So we're gonna do a chat command called code, and we're going to do enter giveaway code is the description for things. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. Makes me sound like an absolute genius. All right, so we don't need any privileges on this one because 
well, maybe we'd want to like hook it up to interact or something, but I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Um, but we're going to add a new field here. We're going to introduce something new. And that's going to be this params field. And we're just going to do keyword as a, I think that's like a, I think that actually shows up in the ch the help. I'm not 100% sure what that shows up in, but this is how we do it. So we'll do uh, a function again as we've been doing. And we're going to go ahead and do name because we're passing the name of the player entering it. And then we're also going to enter our parameters, which in this case will be a keyword. So we can uh, do something very simple like if params equals two equal signs and then a string because we want to actually make sure that whatever the player entered, entered is the same string as whatever we're about to enter here. So we're going to do a code of one, two, three, four because Sure, why not? Then, then something needs to happen. What do we want to happen? Oh, I don't know. Let's uh, let's just do something easy. And you're probably thinking, this is easy? This sounds like not easy at all. Yeah, I'm just copying existing code that I have, which is why it's easy. So we're just getting a table of the player's privileges. And then we want to do Prove's um, fly will do because because why not equals true and then we need to mind test set player proves to the player name again and proves which is that table that we just got and then set true to and you know we're going to uh, let the player know we're going to give some feedback here too so the player knows what's going on or at least they know that something happened. So we'll just do uh, feedback of uh, code entered. No, we'll do valid code. Valid code, exclamation point, because it's a big deal that the player got the code right. Okay, and then we could, um, we could continue this and we could do uh, an else if params equals, oh, I don't know, two, three, four, five, then, uh, you know, we would do something else, give the player something or teleport the player to somewhere. Uh, let's just go ahead and do, just go ahead and do that. Let's just copy this, throw it in here. So we're going to teleport the player and then we'll wrap it up with an else to catch any uh, data that gets inputted that's not valid. So then we'll just do um, my test chat send player name and then we'll just do invalid code. And I think I can do new line try again. I believe that'll work. And then we just end that for the if statements and then we do Another end to end out the function. Save the file. Everything should be good. So let's hop back on into my test and uh, check this code out. All right. So let's try out these codes. We'll just uh, hmm, that code is not valid. Uh, let, let's be like hackers and do. Wow. Um, how do, how do people do that again? Uh, is it like X O R? I don't know, it's an invalid code. What a shame. Let's do like code red. Inv okay, well maybe we just need to do code red. Hmm, okay. I, by now you should get the point. It's just going to tell us it's an invalid code for everything we enter unless it's actually a valid code. So let's go ahead and enter a valid code. And we get an error. Attempt to index global min test. Nil value. I forgot to put an E in. Oops. All right, let's try that again. I had a had a little typo in my code. All right, well, we're getting feedback that it's a valid code. I believe one, two, three, four teleported us, but I was still in the same place, so we didn't really. Okay, no, one, two, three, four. Oh no, that one gives us fly, doesn't it? So let's do this. Revoke single player fly. 
Okay, no fly privilege. That's so sad. Code one, two, three, four. A valid code. Hey, and we have fly. What what a, what a great code. Let's try two, three, four, five. That one teleports us. Oh, we can just do this all over again. Yay! And we'll slowly get killed. Um, and that's also telling us it's a valid code, which is handy. Because if you don't have one and it's just granting you a privilege or doing something that's not physically visible, as in teleporting you or, I don't know, um, changing your health or breath values or something of that nature, uh, the player may not realize that the code was successfully inputted because they get no feedback. So if you're just as a general rule of thumb, and this applies to pretty much everything, um, in coding and I guess outside of coding too, honestly, you know, provide feedback to the user when they input data to know that the data was inputted successfully and that it was correct. You know, just a, just a good rule of thumb to follow. All right, let's jump back to the code and uh, maybe do a couple little more little things. All right, let's do one last chat command here. I did not want to register a node. I wanted to do a chat command. All right, and this will be, uh, we'll just call it final because I'm very creative like that, you know? Super creative, actually. And we will do uh, a description again. Uh, we'll have to pull all these up in the in the help too, uh, and we're just gonna do the final chat command for this video tutorial. Again, very creative. I like seven thousand IQ, highest highest creativity markings of pretty much of all people. Honestly, I'm just super creative. And we're gonna do some. Uh, params here again but we're gonna go a little um ooh, a little on the wild side so in the previous one we just did one parameter we're gonna do multiples this time so we will do oh i don't know because i don't really know what this is going to do but i'm super creative uh we'll just do something along the lines of player um i don't know time uh oops code sure that 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 sounds phenomenal um except we probably should really do it this way i mean this isn't honestly going to do anything so it will do things but it's nothing real so i i could use any kind of fillers i want and it wouldn't matter okay so we have some params here let's go ahead and create our function to do the magic. Um, now, as before, we are going to do name in params, and it's going to pass multiples of these. But we're going to need a way to separate them. And magic will come in and. Um, Hopefully, 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 I'll remember how to do this. So what we want to do is um, the name we already know, so we just need to, well, we need to split the parameters. So let's do that first. We'll do params equals params split. Wow, that's not how you spell split. Split, and then what are we splitting by? Well, we are splitting by a comma. Uh, which I th think isn't going to ignore white space. Um, this is like a little help up here. So I could leave the spaces and I could put as much space as I want in. But when you enter the data, you have to not have the space. I believe um, it might ignore white space. I'm not positive. So we have that now. And now we have to do local player equals params oops square brace one local code equals params square brace is it is it called square brace i don't know i'm very creative but i don't know the names of characters on the keyboard 
And then the last one, local time equals params square brace three. So now we have all of these available as local values. So we can go ahead and do uh, do something super fun and just do my test chat send player, send it to the player and do in inputted values are, should that be a semicolon? It probably should be a semicolon. And then we'll just do dot dot and we'll do player dot dot we'll put a space in do some more dots and this is just to uh, I can never remember the correct enunciation of this we're just merging the strings so we're going to add these three as strings so we'll have a good inputted value and then whatever the three values were that we had inputted will be spit back at us essentially and then we could do anything with these so you know you could do if player equals Joe, which admittedly this is a terrible way to do it because in your hard coding to players, you would really want to maybe do something like um, if player exists, how would we do that? Um, so we have the player name, so we would have to do if my tests get player by name. This is actually probably not the best way to do it. Player then uh, my test chat send player player. This is a. <laughs> This is a message from a secret admirer. That is not how you spell admirer. From a secret fan. There, I know how to spell fan. Perfect. Okay. And then we just do uh, end to uh, to close that. And then we'll just do another end again here as well. Um, what you would really want to do with something like this would probably be, you know, a little more advanced make a little more sense than this. But basically you can take all of these strings that the player inputted and then check them or use them as variables. So like for here, when we're sending a chat to a player, we're taking the player's name that was inputted. Um, and we could do the same thing with the code or the time we could add a delay. So we could have the time be you enter a value and then do like my test after time, chat send player, the player's name, and then the code could be the message that's sent to the player. Actually, you know what, let's do that. Because uh, because it's such a great idea, except I don't remember how to do mind test after. Mind test dot after. Um, time, I don't think this is right. Let me take a quick look at a mind test after bit of code. Okay, so it looks like I was kind of right, but not entirely. So this should be mind test after time gets a comma, and then we do function. And then we call the function, which is my test chat send player. I think, as far as I can tell, that's what we're doing. And then we do an end. Oh, there should be a space here. And then the end goes here. Is that right? Time function? Let me put this on a new line because it's a little cleaner. Mind to shut some player player code. That would be right. And then we would have an end for my test after. And for some reason it's still wrong. Is there an extra closing? I had an extra closing parenthesis. Oh yeah, because function okay. Let's see if this works. Let's jump back over into my test and see what happens. Alright, here we are final 
single player red five. Inputted values are single player red five. Cool. Um, and it worked. We get the chat sent back to us saying red. Uh, was that five seconds? It probably was. Can I just do the upper? Oh yeah, I can't, okay. Let's change that to 15 seconds. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand, seven one thousand, eight one thousand, nine one thousand, ten one thousand, eleven one thousand. Um, I mean, I got twelve one thousand, but sure, we'll call that fifteen seconds. Uh, evidently, the one thousand method uh, isn't exactly accurate, which is just horrifying. I, I built my entire life's clocks on that theory that method and it's uh it's proved it's proven to be flawed by mind test wow that is that's phenomenal anyway that's uh, that's my existential crisis for this video the fact that the counting seconds by using the word 1000 doesn't work that uh that honestly is that's gonna wrap it up i'll just throw the code back up on the screen here for funsies so again, like I mean, some of these examples were pretty stupid, not gonna lie. But it gives you an idea of, you know, basically how you set it up. Of course, anytime you want to use, where's that one? Anytime you want to restrict the usage to a privilege, you can do so just by adding the privileges right here, and then you have to have that privilege in order to use it. The description just shows up in the help. Um, you know, you can use the keywords, check against the keywords, you can use the keywords. Of course, doing something like this, um, you, you want to put some sanity checks in. So before you, uh, you know, do my just after time, you might want to make sure time is, you know, actually a number. Uh, because if it's not, you, you might crash the game. So you would just do something like local time equals param 3 or whatever the default amount of time is you want to do, 30 seconds maybe. Um, and you could do the same here, local code this, or no code entered. Uh, however however you want to do it, you want to have some kind of sanity checks so you don't get errors. Um, another way you might want to do it is if any of these come up not entered, uh, you know, to send a message to the person that ran the chat command saying, hey, hey, dummy dumb, you didn't enter your command correctly. Because here we see, you know, we're sending this message to the player when all these values were entered. But if they didn't enter one, well, none of these values, well, one of these values won't exist if they didn't enter all three. The third one won't exist. So then we're going to get an error because we're going to be trying to print a variable to them, then the variable doesn't exist. So, sanity checks are important, but I'm not going to cover that in this because, um, you know, as, as a general concept, it's not necessarily 100% tied in directly with chat commands. It's something you honestly should just... You should know about them if you're doing anything at all that deals with user input because sometimes users don't input what you expect. And you have to be prepared for that, or you just have a buggy game that crashes all the time because people can't follow instructions, and you are also too lazy to put in a fallback for when people don't follow instructions. So it blame kind of falls 50-50. That's going to wrap this one up. Uh, hopefully this is of some use to somebody. You probably don't really want to use any of these example chat commands because... You know, they're all kind of lame. But the basics hold true. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time for another video, and I will see you then.